Hey there. How, how you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? It's great to I'm see you. Great. Nice to pleasure to meet you. Hello, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, um, I'll jump into it for sake of time. Um, usually, uh, intro questions are bland and boring, but I have a pretty important one here, I think. Good. Are you gentlemen currently transporting any baloney in your slacks? Always. If I was, well, slacks, they'd be full of baloney. There are people who <laughs> would suggest that. Is the question. <laughs> yeah. There are people who would suggest that, and yes, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, for your fans thinking of taking up the practice, what's, uh, what are the practical benefits of doing that and um, keeping sliced deli meats on one's person in this way? Well, you know, fried, fried bologna lasts longer. And if you put like spread on it, like margarine, it's kind of squishy in your trousers, which is a nice feeling. Oh my yes, God. Maurice, go ahead. Brian, what do you have to say about, what do you have to say about select ahead, deli meats in your trousers? Yeah. Brian, please tell the gentleman. Each slice of, of select deli meat has actually been outfitted with a with a hypnotic sapo that will ease its way in through your pores and take over your brain so that I, the brain, can command you. Yes. <laughs> and all I can tell you is what? that all I know I is that I should be once... waiting the show. No, He's no. full of ideas, man. <laughs> if I've got bologna in my slacks for too long, my pinky gets all stinky. That's, a, that's what I say. <laughs> Think of the children, won't you? Yes. <laughs> okay, um, let's talk about the reaction the new show has been receiving on social media. Rob, oh. you, you and I had talked about it privately on Twitter. On the, yes. Yeah. Um, how did that feel for all of you, seeing the happiness you put out into the world in this really difficult time we're all in together? Love that question. Uh, Rob, you want to start? Uh, yeah, well, I, honest to God, Stephen, thank you, by the way, because you engaged me right away. It was really great. Um, honestly, how do we... How do we quantify it? I, I, we've all discussed more than once um, this incredibly wonderful, um, happy accident, this, this you know, confluence of events by which the world is an absolute mess and has been for all a really difficult year. Yeah. The phrase, we're all in this together, has never been more relevant. And the fact that with Mr. Spielberg, we get this glorious chance, Steve, to like Jesse says, not save the world, but by God, bring a little bit of joy. Make a little lemonade with all these freaking lemons. Uh, it, it, it is a literal Hollywood story. I'll tell you what's, what's gratifying, Stephen, and I like your question a lot. You know, it seems like one thing that's changed, one of the reasons I think that the world is ready for an Animaniacs reboot is because there were so many things that we poked fun at in the 90s. Yeah. And that number has only multiplied in recent years. You know, there's so many things going on in popular culture and in the world that deserve to have a needle or two poked into them, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember when they started to launch this stuff online, one thing that's really changed from then to now is that there's, due to the internet and due to giving everybody a voice, which everybody should have, there's a lot of people who it seems like their sole purpose is just to hate stuff, man. Yeah. And it just makes me sad. I mean, it, it, it did with with everything. Yeah. Whenever I see somebody say a cruel comment to anybody online about something they did, it's like yeah. it breaks your heart just a little bit, you know? So when this thing was coming out and I knew that they were going to be putting footage up, I knew there were people primed and ready because I'd read some comments. I mean, I don't do it all the time, but I'd seen some comments where they're like, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to be horrible. Oh, it's going to suck. And you know, Rob's answer to that was, well, cool. You got a lot of other channels. Watch something else if you don't like it. But what was really <laughs> gratifying when they put the footage out and not that this changes anything, but like 99% of the comments were- They flipped I, out. Yeah, they were really excited. I'm so relieved. Thank God. This is just what we needed. And had they said something different, we all still would have been proud of what we did. And the team behind the show did a fantastic job. But it was nice to see it embraced. And it was nice yeah. to see it loved. Because the world really does need a little more of that right about now. So hopefully we can be part of that, you know? Man. I mean, the the well, you know, Steve, better than than we, the-, the the two trailers you guys put out have got like a collective, what, 10 million views or something? Yeah, they they have uh, probably, in my time doing this, they've probably been at least within the top 10, if not top five of the most popular things we put out on Amblin social media. Oh, wow. Man, that means a lot. That means a lot. That is great. I, and, we, only, and only three thumbs down in all. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the three of us, actually. Yeah. 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 We gave it. <laughs> Just no, that's the it. best. For the people who, who um, I saw comments from people saying, oh, they're not going to be able to do the kind of humor they did in the 90s. With this age. Well, looking at, I, I think I watched five or six episodes so far. And um, I was telling the producers before, there are some 
political uh, jokes in it that actually took my breath back and then How just about like, that? loaded laughing. So it's as sharp as it's ever been. Thank you, man. And that, by the way, that's five or six more episodes than the three of us have seen. So we're really happy. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm happy to tell you, you're going to love it. They did. Uh, Good. They did great work by your brilliant work, uh, your brilliant voice work. Um, so I think uh, you'll enjoy it. And I know your fans are going to really love it. Uh, God bless. That, you, thank you, buddy. I, well, uh, yeah. And, and you hit on it. Um, Mr. Spielberg chose Wellesley Wild and Gabe Swar and Wellesley and his crew are killing it. They know how to contextualize, contextualize all that stuff for our characters. And it's, they nailed it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very happy set of circumstances, man. Um, speaking of your characters, uh, it's been over two decades now. What did it feel like stepping back into the shoes of Yakko, Wacko, Brain, and Pinky uh, after so long? It felt, well, it felt just wonderful, man. It was honestly the closest thing I've ever had to a time machine because even though we had you know, seen each other quite regularly throughout all these intervening years because we're all real tight and we all get along and love each other dearly. And, you know, we've done the voices at comic cons and it's personal appearances and Rob has his animaniacs live thing where we all do it, but to be in a studio and sitting on that stool again with oh. your headphones on and shut your eyes and hear those voices coming at you. It was honestly just like being back then and, and nothing had changed. It was just new, really funny scripts and such a joy, you know, that's all it was. It, I, I actually had to stop the session uh, for a second uh, when, when we got back in, because the first Pinky in the Brain episode we, we recorded, um, when I said, Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Yeah. I went, holy crap, bro. Yeah. I've been We're waiting doing... 20, 25 years to say that and have somebody mm. pay me for it. Yeah. You know, and oh, it's like, oh. this is, this. so, you know, just to say those words again and be with Rob and be with Jess and Tress, uh, it, was, it was just, uh, it lifted... Beautiful. It lifted the, my, my whole year. Yeah. You know? so. uh, uh, just astonishing. And, you know, when I got there and I was putting on everybody's shoes, the first thing I heard was, hey, get the hell out of my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you putting on everybody, standing and everybody's filling your shoes? They're my damn shoes. Yeah, something's was, never changed, Steve, you know. <laughs> I was hoping one of you would take the bait with the shoes reference because none of, you. Your, none of your characters wear shoes. So that that's was, all right. That yeah, that's what I say. I'm just trying them on, but get the hell out of my shoes. <laughs> okay, uh, Maurice, you've been a bit quiet, so I had some questions for you um, to hopefully bring you out. Um, there are at least I'm very, very shy. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> There are at least two jabs in, in the episodes I've seen so far, two jabs at the dulcet tones of your gift, your singing voice in this new season. Yes. Does it hurt you to see your writers and your fellow cast members mock you in such a jealous manner? No, no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually thrilled that they get that singing is, is, a, is just not something that I do. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'll say this. I've gotten a little better at it. I'm a better singer now than I was in the 90s. My son has uh, grown up both with the show and he's become a musician himself. So there's constantly live music in my house. He's recording, he's writing. So I've gotten a little better uh, just, just by osmosis of understanding harmony and that type of thing. So um, yeah, it's, it's fine. I take no offense. Uh, these guys, Jess and Rob and Tress, I mean, they actually read music. They sight read music you know, and, and sing it. Uh, so they're the real singers. I'm just along for the, I sort of Rex Harrison things a little bit, you know, I talk to yeah. them. And I, but that works for brain. So I'm brain stem, brain stem. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Mo, 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 brings, Mo brings the Mo magic to everything that he does, including this song. Yeah, I was just, I was just teasing there. And oh, I, I, man. I love the jokes that, you know, they, I think twice they say, you know, that was flat. Um, everybody loves to hear all of you sing because it's, it's just brings joy. Um, Thank you. Like we have to wrap up. So um, one last question. Are there any episodes uh, that you really enjoyed performing? Um, something you feel that Animaniacs fans will get a kick out of and should keep an eye out for uh, within this first year, uh, season? I, I think you kind of answered your question by saying, you know, the, that you, your breath was taken aback that you're like, oh my God, they totally are. They're doing this. Um, I, it's, kind of an embarrassment of riches, Steve. I don't, I don't have, I don't know which, how many of the glorious moments and pearls that sprung up that I would choose. I, I said earlier today, and I continue to say that having not seen anything more than the trailers, um, 
the 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 one episode that I really am looking forward to and is is the the bun control um, episode. <laughs> uh, it's so smart, so edgy when we recorded it. And Danny Jacobs, who plays that, uh, you know the um, oh gosh, the yeah, gentleman, I, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, is just a wonderful actor. And so I I'm looking forward to seeing that. But man, I. I I think people are going to blow through these 13 like for, that. Yeah. For me, for me, my answer to it, man, and I don't know if it's in the first 13 or the second 13, but, you know, Wacko in general is a beautiful callback to my childhood because, you know, I, I grew up a little later than the Beatles, but I loved the Beatles from the time I was a baby, man. And so, you know, doing the voice of Wacko is sort of an homage to the Beatles, as we all know. And in this new season, or one of the two new seasons, we actually did an Animaniacs Broadway musical, which we've done in the past, and people love them, and justifiably so, because they're wonderful, of my all-time favorite musical that was also the the first show I ever performed in front of a large audience in for several months, a long, long time ago. So that was just like, oh my gosh, man, everything I love is coming back for me in this show that I love, you know? So yeah. how cool. Is and that? I'll just say, to keep your eyes open for the episode where Pinky and the Brain try to take over the world. There, that, yes! That, that, was one of them. that was Don't pretty ever pretty miss good. that, Narv! <laughs> Hey, all right, Dad. <laughs> well, it, it's been a real honor um, to, to you, see all too. of you and to talk with you. Thank you. Thank so Thank you, much. Steve. Thanks, Please Steve. say our give that our best you. and give our love to everybody at Hulu. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Take care.